I'm here today for really three reasons, or I'm interested in education for three reasons. Uh, uh, first, as uh, an employer, uh, second, as a parent and grandparent, and third, as an American. But whether you look at the NAEP results, you look at TIMS, uh, you look at any international comparison of kids who graduate on average from the 12th grade, the results are relatively poor compared to their international counterparts. Uh, you know, if you take those kids who are doing advanced placement courses and compare them to their comparables internationally, they don't do particularly well. And if you're the country with the highest standard of living effectively, and you make the simple rule of thumb projection that standard of living goes with average attainment of education, average educational component of the workforce, and you rank in the lowest 20% of the industrialized countries around the world in terms of your 12th grade graduates, the projection is kind of poor. Uh, I'm perhaps also here as a board member of Achieve, uh, which I think is a, an excellent uh, um, organization, uh, which is a really a good combination of what government and the private sector can do. It's a good public-private partnership between CEOs and governors to try to uh, improve the situation. K-12 through is not doing a particularly good job. You can't find a study that will show that we're doing a good job. If you just go to the web and look up the NAEP results for any state in the United States and you look to see what fraction of people by any definition are doing at class level in mathematics, science, reading, you'll be just destroyed by the results compared to their international peers. So K through 12 needs to do a better job. But the real issue is if in fact K through 12 is not established with a set of standards to educate children to, to either join the workplace or to continue their education university level, a common set of standards that they have to work to, then education will continue to look like the semiconductor industry looked like in the 1970s. It wasn't working. It had no chance of working. It was losing market share from an international standpoint. And the industry would have disappeared from the United States if we hadn't done something substantially different. What are the benefits you get out of this? You get an overall improvement in the system. The tide does rise, and that means international competitiveness. There's nothing more important in the United States today than the discussion of international competitiveness. Almost regardless of you know, what is debated here in Washington, D.C., the issue for the next generation and the generation after that is whether the United States is a competitive environment from an economic standpoint. And you know there are three key things involved there. Number one is education. You have to have an educated workforce. Number two is you have to have ideas for the next generation of products, services, and companies. That's where basic investment in research and development is important. Number three is you have to have an environment where smart people get together with smart ideas and do something. But none of that, none of that has a chance to begin unless you have smart people. And that's why education is always the number one priority. <laughs> Setting the standards, as we just talked about in the earlier presentation, is important because there should be a set of standards involved in what does it take to be prepared to go into a university? What does it take to prepare your piece of equipment to come into my factory? Those are two very similar questions. The world is much too small. In Tom Friedman's parlance, it's much too flat. And the world is moving much too fast for us ever to sit still. If we fall behind in education, which we are doing so, we're losing our lead at the university level, we have certainly fallen behind the K through 12 level. The consequences can't be far behind. It's very difficult to find any task today where you're not going to need a basic skill set in the same sort of things that Achieve is looking at, comprehension, problem solve. So there's clearly a, 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 
a division in the road where there's going to be a college track and there's going to be a vocational track, but the expectations for both of those tracks I think is substantially higher than we demand of kids today. The real issue I think is is what we expect out of our kids and what we demand of them. Um, the expectation level we have of, of what children can accomplish, I described earlier as abysmal, and I really think it is. We set the standard so low. You know, like any corporation, if you get your priorities straight, that's where your money goes. And if education is your number one priority for the future generations and for the future competitiveness of your country, then in fact, it should be up number one on the funding list. Places that I have seen and uh, where schools set very, very high standards and are rigorous in maintaining those standards, you see some absolutely outstanding results. I think the U.S. does itself a great disservice when we set our expectation levels as low as we do.